Hi. Uh, Hi, this is Dr. Victoria Nalule, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Nalule Energy and Mining Consultancy. Name Energy in brief, it's an international consulting firm. We do lots of work with respect to oil, gas, energy, mining, energy transitions, and climate change. We do consultancies, international consultancies. We do regional consultancies, and we also do tailored research and consultancy for governments and other institutions like NGOs. We also do trainings and we offer capacity building in these sectors. So in case you want any work to be done by the leading international experts in the energy and mining sectors, reach out to us at Naluli Energy and Mining Consultancy. Anyway, we are continuing with our series of videos and um, in this session, I want to talk about the ineffective local content provisions in the oil and gas contracts. So I have like three videos on my YouTube channel focused on local content in the extractive industries, local content in the oil and gas sector. So I'm not going to go deep into the issue of local content, but rather I want to talk about some of the provisions which might seem to be good provisions, good local content provisions, but in reality, in practice, they're ineffective. And I'm going to use a case study for the Guyana Petroleum Agreement that was signed in 2016. Remember for extractive contracts, it might be, it might seem like it's an old contract, but extractive resources one of the uh, one of the characteristics or the unique natures of these resources is that they are for long term uh, the duration is often like 30 years or even 40 years so you might find a contract that was signed in 2015 still having an impact so this contract was signed in 2016 but obviously it still has an impact in the country so I want to review the local content provision. Remember, local content is intended to empower the host government, empower the local people to be able to get jobs in the extractive sector or in the oil and gas sector, uh, to ensure that local goods and services are used or are preferred during the development of the oil and gas sector or the extractive project, and also to empower local companies but how can you do this? Because local content, it has been there for quite some time, but originally, if you see some of the reasons as to why countries were not benefiting, it's because their people were not involved in the extractive sector. And remember, extractive projects are capital intensive, so you always have to depend on international oil companies, international mining companies, and these companies often used to come with their own employees. So local content is intended to ensure that the local people are empowered and also the local companies are empowered. But it also depends on how you negotiate these provisions. You might think you've negotiated a good provision and yet in reality, if you are to uh, apply the provision in practice, it might be ineffective. So I want to look at the example of the Guyana local content provision. But remember, local content, they can be provided into in the contract or some countries have gone ahead to enact local content laws. So when, when you're watching this video, have that in mind. It can be contractual or it can be legislated. So if a country, if your country has both the local content provisions in the agreement or in the contract, and it also has local content laws, then you have to look closely and analyze if these provisions and these laws are effective. So looking at the case of Guyana, we are looking at the 2016 Petroleum Agreement that was signed between the government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and ESO Exploration and Production Guyana Limited and also CINOC. 
and Hayes. So there are three companies that signed this agreement with the government. And whereas there are various provisions that are relevant, in this short video, we want to look at Article 18 that talks about Guyana resources and Article 19 that talks about employment and training. Remember, some contracts, they can have like clauses that have like local content. So you would know this is local content, but other contracts now like this Guyana example, it doesn't specifically mention local content, but if you read through the agreement or the contract, you notice that uh, this article on Guyana resources, Article 18 and Article 19, they're basically focused on local content. So let's go to those articles. We shall not read everything. We shall just spotlight the provisions that are really not effective. Okay. So you always have to look at the contract, at the agreement, and analyze if the provisions are effective. And remember, at Name Energy, we are available to negotiate this kind of contracts. Uh, so if you need experts who can help you out with negotiations and ensuring that the provisions you sign are effective, you, you can always reach out to us. So if you look at Article 18, it talks about the Guyana resources. And I'm not going to read everything. But it's to the effect that the petroleum operations pursuant to this agreement, the contractor shall require that the operator give preference. So you note this word preference to the purchase of Guyanese goods and materials, because we talked about local content ensuring that uh, the local goods are utilized. And then now let's move at this uh, clause or the next wording, which says that the purchase of Guyanese goods and materials, provided that such goods and materials are available on a timely basis of the quality and in the quantity required by the operator at a competitive price. So yes, you're enhancing the utilization of local goods and services, but now you're also putting this provision provided. So you're giving the operator or the oil company more powers to determine which goods are which goods are considered to be like of good quality and which goods have a competitive price so if the operator has like other offers outside guyana where they can get goods at a competitive price and they can get goods that are, are better like they can get better quality goods then this provision will be useless so how do you replace this provision to ensure that it benefits the country? Because right now it doesn't benefit the country at all. Yes, the operator can is is has to utilize local goods and, 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 and materials, but then the operator still has powers to determine which goods they will utilize. So here it's giving the own company more powers with respect to en enforcing this local content provision. And if you want to know how you can rephrase it to ensure that the provision benefits the company, I mean the host government or the provision is fair, obviously you have to look out for name energy so that we can uh, be able to advise on that. And then the other thing, because there are so many, there are so many mistakes in this provision. Uh, also, the operator should give preference to the employment of Guyanese subcontractors. Now, here we are talking about now the companies. Besides using the, lo the local goods and materials, you also have to involve the local companies. But it goes ahead to say, in so far as they are commercially competitive and satisfy the operator's financial and technical requirements. So still here, the operator is given more powers to determine which Guyanese companies are financial, are financially and technically competitive. So it's the operator who will decide whether they can actually utilize the local goods 
and still it's, it's the operator that can decide which Guyanese companies they can involve in their in their operation. So the provision clause 18.1 A and B, both N and A and B, in in theoretically they are supposed to be enhancing local content. But realistically, the company still has more powers to determine which goods they can utilize, which materials they can utilize, and also to determine which local companies they can involve. So this is not an effective local content provision. And moving forward, the country and the oil company will have to find ways of reprising this provision, but the way it stands is not effective at all. Then we move on to clause three. The contractor shall make reasonable efforts to train Guyanese suppliers and subcontractors in the mechanics of participating in tenders and completing for and competing for contracts to be offered pursuant to the, to the petroleum operations. So the question here is. What is reasonable effort? What is reasonable effort? Because the company can just put in like just minimum effort and be like that is reasonable for us. So still, this clause is not effective. It's not effective to enhance local content in the country, and it has to be re rephrased. But how can you do that? That's what we got. Energy. Now, if you look at uh, Article 19, focused on employment and training, it also has its own challenges, but we shall not go into that. But this is an article that ensures employment and training of the Guyanese nationals. So, close. 19 to say without prejudice to the right of the contractor to select employees and determine number thereof in the conduct of petroleum operations, the contractor shall require the operator to employ and contractually obligate subcontractors to employ Guyanese citizens having appropriate qualifications and experience in the conduct of the pet petroleum operations in Guyana. So here we're also talking about qualifications and experience because remember the contractor can still decide what kind of qualifications they want and what kind of minimum, I mean what minimum qualifications they want and what minimum experience they want. So still it's always good to take into consideration whether the country has enough people who have like over 20 years experience. What if the contractor decides to put the experience for 20 years or 30 years? If it's an emerging economy, will that be effective? No, it will not be effective. So this provision also on employment and training, it's a good provision, but it has various challenges. And uh, in this video, it's just to point out that some of these provisions are good on paper, but in reality, if you look at them closely, they do not ben they do not benefit the host governments. But that is something we can discuss in another video. Or for governments, you can always involve us in the negotiation of these contracts and these clauses, so that we let you know how to rephrase the phrases in a way that will benefit your country. Or in a balanced way that can benefit the country and the oil company. But for now, I was just pointing out the fact that some of these provisions might appear to be good, but in reality, they are not good at all. So be very careful with the clauses you include in this petroleum agreement. That marks the end of the video. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe.